Good morning, gang. Um, I'm in my car because if I go inside, the beagles will probably drive me insane because I've been out for a little bit. <laughs> so I thought, I thought I'd do this in the car. So as the um, as the description says above, we're going to talk about anxiety today. Now, uh, this is something that I am seeing more and more and more with our beagles, and um, a lot of it has come from COVID, and that also involves uh the fact that they weren't socialized properly because you couldn't uh and because there was a lot of people just breeding beagles uh and not thinking about genetics not thinking about the uh the, the temperament of the two dogs and so we are seeing a lot more anxiety coming through so i'm going to go through the six points when it comes to working with um with our beagles now, if anyone's there and you're here, can you just put a comment in below because I can't see if this is working or not. So just let me know if you're here uh, and hello and wave hello. Um, so I'm going to go through the six points above individually so you can get some idea of why they're so important when we work with anxiety in dogs. Now, historically, when a beagle or a dog has exhibited anxiety behaviour, which can be very visible sometimes, you know, you, you can typically tell when a dog is anxious, if they are shaking, they're withdrawn, their tails are tucked between their legs, they're hiding, all of those things. But then we have the other side of anxiety, which manifests as aggressive looking behaviour. So this is where you're, you might have lead reactivity, you may have reactivity when guests come into your home, you, the, your dog may not like certain people, certain things, all of those things. And we have in the past decided that we can train that out of our dogs. And so that's why, oh, my, oh I'm back. I might have to change to something. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, I'm back. Um, and so we've decided that we can train anything out of our dogs when the reality is that when you have a beagle who has anxiety it's the same as us you can't train anxiety out of me i've had it for 47 years um, and it has been exacerbated by certain things and that's the thing a lot of our beagles uh, are predisposed to mental health disorders just like humans you know so things like bipolar ADHD, autism, anxiety, typically are hereditary. They come from our parents, our grandparents, whatever it is. Same with our dogs. Our dogs can uh, get anxiety-based disorders from their parents, from their grandparents, from their genetics. And this is something that we then have to be mindful of because as they develop, depending on what they are exposed to, can either keep that anxiety down here or it can massively exacerbate it. And then there's also our dogs that have been through trauma. So you may have adopted beagles and they've experienced very bad trauma, whether that's physical or psychological. And so they have anxiety and they have fear-based behaviors that they're never gonna get over. You know, they're never gonna get over it. It's like PTSD. They, we can definitely minimize and manage these behaviors but we can't eradicate them. And this is where the dog training world has been so wrong for so many decades, where we've been telling our, our clients, if you work hard enough, if you try hard enough, if you have patience and consistency, you can train your beagle to like strangers. You can train your beagle to like being touched. You can train your beagle to be okay on a walk. When the reality is that's not the case. So let's go through the six points. So first of all, mindset. And I am going to give you uh human and dog analysis okay um comparisons because they are very very similar and i know there's probably some of you out there that don't like the fact that someone like me or dog trainers will compare dogs to humans i'm not saying that they are e exact there are similarities that they exhibit and anxiety based behaviors there is that there is that going on so mindset so how you are brought up um, as a human being is how your mindset is going to be as an adult. So if you are brought up in a very negative environment, you will have a negative uh, mindset. Uh, and that will come in different levels. So each child in that family will have a different mindset at a different level. 
if you're brought up in a positive mindset um, family, then you are more likely to have a positive mindset. You may still have anxiety because that is your baseline um, genetics, but it's how you are brought up, how you uh, are exposed to the world, including your school life, your social and your family life. And then that will equate to how you are as an adult. And you will have some very deep-rooted, intrinsic, subconscious thoughts um, that you may not always be aware of that do influence your behaviour. And the same goes for our dogs. How they are brought up initially in the environment they are exposed to is how they will behave as an adult. So this is why behaviour training is so important because you don't necessarily know how to bring up a dog when you first bring a dog home in, into your home. It isn't a natural thing. Even having a baby, I didn't know what I was doing when I first brought my baby into the world and I read books and I went to classes and I went to, you know, the midwife came around, all of those things. But yet we have this belief that we don't need to do these things with our dogs, that our dogs should know what we want. When the reality is they speak a very different language to us and, and they are trying to figure out what we want and they're making mistakes and we're punishing them for it. The reality is, is that you, how you bring up your beagle is how they're going to be as an adult. So if you do not get on top of hyperactivity or you are doing things to create hyperactivity in your beagle, they will be a hyper adult beagle. But if you are doing things to teach them calmness and getting their minds working, so their, their mind rather than their cardio, then you will have a karma adult beagle. So it is being, there's the belief in the beagle world and it is on the internet. And this is why there's so much misinformation about beagles out there and why so many of you are coming to me going, well, I did all my research and now <laughs> I'm having all these issues. The reality is, is that they, the, that first 18 months of their life, you do not want to give them too much cardio per day. I know that sounds ridiculous <laughs> because you're probably being told on a regular basis that they need more and more exercise, tire them out, and then they will be better behaved at home. That's not the case. That actually creates more problems than it solves. It is this that is what's going to cause them to be calm. This is this what's going to make them sleep better, nap better, all of those things. They need mental stimulation. How they get that is through using their brains and the best way to do that is through their scent work um, and it also is giving them things to do challenges it you know don't buy any of those mental puzzles online you know they work them out within about 30 seconds and then they're a waste of money and you chuck them in the bin you know it's about setting things up for them to do and so mental stimulation is through chewing as well you know they have to use their brains in how to chew things um, and they also have to, and it give, and it's also quite um, energetic to chew. So again, that does does uh, actually tire them as well. So mindset wise, you know, your your ten minute, fifteen minute walks are enough for mindset. You know, they and what we want to do with them when we take them for a walk is we don't want them to just walk by our sides, okay? That is just ridiculous. You've got a beagle, that's not how it, this works. If you want a dog that walks by your side, I'm afraid you have to go and get a Labrador or a Spaniel. They are geared and worked very differently to other breeds of dogs. They want to smell everything. They want to investigate everything because that's how we bred them. We can't now expect them to do something else when we bred them that way. <laughs> you know, it's ridiculous. So they want to stop, you stop. They want to smell that bush for 20 seconds, they smell that bush for 20 seconds. You then walk on. Yes, you may not get very far. Yes, you may not get a cardio workout, but then that's something you've got to do separately to walk in your beagle. They need to smell everything, sniff everything. And if possible and it's safe to do so, let them walk you. Let them decide where they want to go. Yes, they are going to do zigzaggy walking, you know, but I use a retractable lead when it's safe to do so because that allows them to do that zigzag walking. That 
ability to make their own decisions and to investigate what they want to do is so so good for their mental health guys it really really is if you keep pulling them every time they stop or you don't allow them to finish sniffing what it is they want to sniff they're going to become very stressed very anxious and their behavior is going to be affected by it if you can't walk them for any reason then you do scent work in the house you can hide treats in the house you can get cardboard boxes and fill and fill them with newspaper and put two or three treats in and get them to rip it apart you know all of these things to get them to use their brains you know you can hide stuff in the garden you can you can give them a keyword go search and so initially you would show them where the treat is go search go find whatever it is so that they know what it is you want them to do so that they then over time when you turn them out into the garden you've hidden seven or eight treats in the garden and you say go find they will they will use their brains and they will go find so that is more important um and we'll talk about cardio in a second the next thing on the list um and just sorry going back to mindset for us as well as humans if you have a negative mindset and i have been i do have a negative mindset okay but it's a hell of a lot better than what it was because in my early 30s i realized that it wasn't it wasn't doing me any good so i went about and i have ever since then in the last 17 years i have gone about trying to change what's going on in here i haven't succeeded in a lot of cases but i have in others um i've had therapy uh i've had emdr emdr therapy for trauma-based uh, problems that i've had um but again, it, it's a it's about our own mindsets, you know. Okay, self help, self development isn't everybody's cup of tea, but there are some fantastic YouTube podcasts, books you can read about how to change your mindset, and you can change your mindset about pretty much anything. You know, it could be money, it could be how you view yourself, it could be how you view the world. So these are the things that we can do to change our mindset to help our anxiety. The next thing is diet. Now, I know that this is something that some of you may think, well, I can't afford to put my dog on an expensive diet. You don't have to. Jem Ross, who is in the group, she's a nutritionist. You can speak with her. She has different levels of packages. She will find you the cheapest option to suit your budget, but the food will be better probably than what you're feeding them. So I'm afraid if you're feeding them pedigree charm or bakers and even hills, even hills that's being peddled out by our vets, then I'm afraid it isn't the best for them. She will be able to find you something that will meet your budget, but will be better nutritionally. It's the same for us. I have to have a very strict nutritional diet, fruits, vegetables, protein whole meal fruit uh, whole meal um foods you know probiotics all those kinds of things i also have to take a lot of supplements because these are the things that do help keep my anxiety at bay it's the same for our dogs they need a very nutritional diet to help their brains to help them with their anxiety they also need supplements. You know, my uh, Peppa takes Skullcap and Valerian because she is a very wired hyper dog. I'm not doing it to calm her down, but I know that with adults and children who have ADHD, their brains are wired very, very differently. And we are seeing neurodiversity in our dogs. Now, Peppa is the equivalent of ADHD. Billy was the equivalent of autism. So we know in the human world that things like saffron vitamin d uh, omega-3 fish oils um, and zinc and magnesium really do help the adhd brain now some of those we can't give to our dogs but there is stuff we can give to our dogs just to help them with their neurodiverse brain and giving um pepper skull cap and valerium has really really helped she's not still not perfect you know she's still quite wired at times but she is a lot calmer based on her diet and her supplements so that's something to look at and Gem can help you with that 
exercise. So exercise in humans, when you have anxiety, is you have a buildup, and this is the same in dogs, you have a buildup of adrenaline and cortisol. So when you're anxious, you're more likely to move from your emotional, your logical brain, depending on which one you use the most. I think men are mostly, more, mostly logical, women are more emotional. The survival brain is your fight, 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 flight, fight and freeze. When you move into that, you are flooded with adrenaline and cortisol. When you are anxious, you move into your survival brain more. Um, and so your body is constantly flooded with all of these awful, stressful hormones in your body. Um, and the best way to do that is to trick your brain. Okay, so your brain, when it's full of adrenaline and cortisol, in the majority of us, it wants us to flee, it wants us to run, it wants us to stop doing what it is we're doing that's causing us the anxiety. When you do cardio exercise, you're tricking your brain into it believing that you are doing what it wants you to do is to flee, to run away. So then the cortisol and the adrenaline starts to leave your body a lot quicker. You can also combat more adrenaline and cortisol entering your body. By doing cardio now i know when you're anxious and depressed it's one of the hardest things to do is to motivate yourself to to exercise i've been there i am in a place at the moment where i do try and exercise regularly at least once a day and that's more than just your beagle walk you know that's the the bike the, the swimming the yoga all of those things that i do they help me with my anxiety because they get rid of the stress hormones from my body it's the same for our dogs but too much cardio for both humans and dogs puts stress on the body. So you have to have a balance. And that's why you do not need to get your beagle off lead every single day. They need two to three days of cardio exercise, just like a, uh, uh, like a uh, human. When they were hunters, they didn't go out every single day. They had rest days. They probably hunted maybe two, three times a week. And the rest of the time they were resting. We do not need to do that. We do not need to get our dogs off lead. We do not need to get them having cardio every single day. But if you give them bursts of it, five or ten minutes, which you can do through play, and um, you know, getting them to chase the ball or, or using a flirt pole, you are helping to release those stress hormones from their body. And when they're very young, they get overstimulated very, very quickly. And they will pre produce cortisol and, and, and adrenaline. And so... Even three minutes of just getting them to chase a flirt pole is enough to help them release those hormones. And if you've got a stressed, anxious beagle, doing a bit of cardio with them at home will help them. It's not about walking. You know, some of your beagles do have fear around going outside, and that can be for a number of reasons. It's some of them are just like us some of us have agoraphobia and we have it to different levels you know some of us can go out maybe two three times a week some of us can't go out at all you know all of that kind of thing forcing them to do something that causes them stress and anxiety is not the best thing to do exposing them constantly to the thing that causes them stress is not the best thing to do it's like telling me to what what is one of my things that i don't like being being with new people okay so if you were to put me every single day you drop me in a group of maybe five or six people and i had to communicate with those people every single day i can pretty much guarantee you i'd fall apart by the end of the week it causes me so much anxiety and stress it's the same if you insist on taking your dog for a walk every single day and they're not liking it and they're they're visibly stressed and they're visibly exploding every time they see a dog or a person you are doing more damage than good you do need to expose them in small dribs and drabs to it so we can try and desensitize and train them but there are some beagles that just can't do it just like there are some humans that just can't do it they can't go outside doesn't mean that they're not having a good life because what you do is you compensate at home or you book a exercise field once or twice a week for them to run around and have it to themselves. Yes, we need to socialise our dogs, but the reality is, is that 
I only need one or two friends in my life. I don't need a whole bunch of them. Whereas my husband's the, the complete opposite. He loves to have a bunch of different people so he can do different things, you know, different things with different people. I don't want that. I don't need it. And actually that would be too overwhelming for me. It's the same with our dogs. Some of them only need one or two friends. Billy was like that. But then Pepper will be friends with every dog you see on the planet. You can't make your dog be something you want it to be. You can't make a human be something it doesn't want to be. Supplements, like I said, we've spoken about. And then therapy and training. So this is where I come in. Um, and <clears throat> I also do look at all of those other elements as well. But diet, I do offset that usually to <clears throat> someone else who's more uh, qualified to do that. We get therapy um, and that can be talking therapy, that can be EMDR therapy, that can be um, hypnotherapy, all of these things to try and get ourselves into a better place mentally. Um, I've been in and out of therapy all my life um, based on many, many different things, um, but I've had EMDR therapy for trauma-based working in the police. Um, so I had three particular incidences that was were uh, still in the front of my brain it felt like I'd only dealt with them yesterday and when I was very very stressed they would just repeat and repeat and repeat over in my brain so I had EMDR therapy and you know what they're at the back of my brain now I can think about them and they don't cause me any trauma whatsoever we have to do the same for our dogs if they are suffering with anxiety, whether that's separation anxiety, leash reactivity, whether they've got visible fear phobias, noise phobias, all of the things that cause them stress, fear, anxiety, it's so important that we do uh, give them training, behavioural training, not dog training. So not dog training. That's not the stuff you want. You don't want um, you know, to go and see a dog trainer who does the obedience type of things. You need a behaviour trainer like myself who specialises in behaviour like anxiety. Because I will tell you what you can expect from your beagle over a period of time of us working with together. I know exactly now from having worked with hundreds and hundreds of beagles with anxiety-based behaviour, including leash reactivity, that there is a point you can only get to, and that is it. You're not going any further. No matter what any other dog trainer in the world tells you, and please don't go near an aversive trainer, because yes, they will say they can guarantee that your dog won't have leash reactivity, but they are getting you to use things that cause pain or shock. That's like putting a prong collar or an e-collar around me and saying, go sit in that group of people, and every time you try and walk away from it because it's causing you stress, I'm going to give you an electric uh, shock or I'm going to pull on the prong collar to make you stay in place. That just in itself is just cruel. Uh, um, and, it, you know, electric collars in the UK are being banned from February next year. Thank the Lord. The next thing has to be the prong collar. You will cause your dog more stress and anxiety because every time you you use aversive training, they are being filled with cortisol and adrenaline. And so their behavior is going to be worse at home. It's going to be worse overall. And eventually they're going to explode. And it might not be on that walk where they're being reactive. It might be in the house with you where they bite you. It just comes out of nowhere because they've got this build up and build up and build up. It's a bit like me. I have a build up and build up of anxiety and then I will suddenly just rage. You know, my family are aware of this and I am working on this. It's the same with our dogs. So you do need professional help with anxiety because I need professional help with my anxiety. Um, and I will go through the steps that we will typically follow with anxiety based behaviour. For example, separation anxiety. Some beagles just can't be left. They just cannot be left. Billy and Matt sometimes would be okay in an, for an hour, but other times I knew I needed to get a pet sitter. Other times, with leash reactivity, a game with Billy, managed him beautifully, beautifully. There was two, three times a week where I couldn't because obviously a dog would come over to him or we'd round a corner and someone would be there. The majority of the time I've managed him and I minimised his behaviour beautifully. That was never going to get rid of it. Never going to get rid of it. You know, he just, I just knew how to manage him and that's what I teach you. 
And then the last thing, medication. Um, now we have our own pre uh, beliefs about medication and that can be about medication for humans and medication for dogs. I have taken medication for nearly two decades now and I've needed it. I have done all the therapy, I've done all the things I'm supposed to do, but I still couldn't cope with life. And that is because in December 2022, I was diagnosed with uh, inattentive ADHD. So I don't present as hyper. Um, I have a little bit of impulsivity, but I'm mostly inattentive. So everything that I have experienced, so that's my baseline, that's my brain. My brain works very, very differently to everybody else. Or if you've got ADHD and intuitive ADHD, then we're very similar. Every experience I've had since then and every decision I've made, every vocation I've made, uh, has impacted my, my mental health. Um, and so it's the same thing with our dogs. There is some things that are never going to get over. So if you've adopted a beagle who's got a very traumatic past, they need medication. Most of them, 99% of them need medication because they are constantly in their survival brain. You cannot learn in your survival brain. You are reactive in your survival brain um, and you are full of cortisol and adrenaline and eventually it's gonna kill them because they will develop diseases, they put stress on their organs um, and all of those things that happen to us as humans. So. And then you'll have, I'll work with people that we will do all the training, we'll get to a certain limit and we cannot get past it. And that tells me that they need help. They need medicinal help. It doesn't have to be permanent, but Bills was the same. I worked with Bills for a very, very long time. Um, I couldn't get him past a certain point. So putting him on anti-anxiety medication and we flew through that point and we got to another point, but that was it. We weren't ever going to get any further than that, even with the medication. Yes, it's been drilled into us that medication is the easy way out, that it's not the way to deal with things, all of those things. Okay, guys, you know, if you talk to um, many, many people, and I follow a great psychiatrist online called Daniel Amen. He's an American guy. He maps the brain um, and he talks about anxiety and lots of different things. The reality is, is that he says the same thing. If you've tried everything, you've tried your diet, supplements, therapy, you've done everything, exercise, and you still are at a point where you can't go any further, then he will then consider medication. And it's the same in my world. I will do everything I can beforehand, but there will be a point where the, the, the next option, the only option is medication. Billy was on it all his life, but I've had many, many clients where we've, we've used it and then after three to six months, we've, we've weaned them off, okay? So that is why it's at the bottom of my list because it's not the first thing I go to. It is in trauma. So in Vigo Beagles, Prozac, it's working really well with a majority of them. If you have adopted a beagle who's an ex-breeding beagle who's been on a puppy farm, Usually that is my first port of call because if I know from experience now that everything that we try just isn't going to work or it is going to work, but to a, to a certain extent and still your dog is not massively happy and is still anxious. So there is those circumstances where medication becomes number one and then everything else is underneath. But in the majority of cases, medication is number six and everything comes before it. So I've whittled on, <laughs> but I'm very passionate about anxiety, as you can see. I have it myself. I've had, the last two weeks, I've had some very bad anxiety, but that's because I've been changing from one medication to another. And when I see a dog who is anxious, it breaks my heart because we can make their lives a lot easier. Yes, it does involve an investment. Yes, it does involve, you know, having to invest in your beagle whether that's to pay for training vets medication but we take these dogs on knowing this we know that we're going to have to go to the vets we know we're going to have to go and get dog training we know we might have to have medication at some point so this is why it is so important 
Now, investment wise with me, I have instalment plans. I don't expect you to have to pay in one go and I will work with your budget within reason, of course, because I want you to get the help. I want you to get your beagle to get the help. So that's, you know, my priority for you guys, because I know I can help you. I know I can make a massive difference and I have, you know, I've helped many, many beagles with anxiety. Uh, and that also includes the older beagles that are developing it due to dementia. So there's a link up above to my diary. Book an initial free 20 minute call with me. Um, and we'll go through those six points and then we'll see how we can improve them for you. Um, but for now, have a wonderful day. Sun's out, thank the Lord. <laughs> I'm going to go inside now, see my girls. They're probably going to jump all over me because I've not been out of the house for a couple of hours. But other than that, I'll see you soon. Bye.